After happily seeing a few requests, we've got a new wardrobe update with a few of my favorite picks for the spring and summer season. I've been doing these seasonally for a little while now, but decided to skip out on spring because the weather has been so terrible here in Portland. Luckily though, the weather's gotten a lot better. I've been feeling inspired. I've got some lighter summery tones here. So without any further ado, let's dive into the first category of t-shirts. I've been pretty locked into two distinctly different cotton t-shirts from two different brands with very different styling. One is the Slub Cotton t-shirt from 45, and the other is the Pioneer Pocket t-shirt from Filson. I love both of these, and they kind of cover both ends of the spectrum in terms of style and feel and comfort for me. Starting with the 45 Slub Cotton tee, this is a great like warm, hot weather tee. It's really thin and flowy. These are garment dyed as well. We'll be seeing a few other items that are garment dyed too, but essentially that means that they build and sew the t-shirt, then dye the t-shirt as a whole, as opposed to having the fabric dyed and then you assemble the t-shirt kind of gives it a little bit more of a softer lived in look and feel so just really comfortable i love this slub texture that's on the fabric they're just really nice and thin it's 160 gsm fabric on the flip side of that my other favorite t-shirt is the pioneer pocket t-shirt from filson you know these cover that sort of loose flowy comfortable vibe and the pioneer t-shirts from filson have that kind of sturdy heavy duty more workwear oriented thick type of feel and comfort to them. Filson describes these as a mid-weight. I would definitely call them a heavier weight tee, at least on the spectrum of t-shirts I've tried. You know, it's not those really thick loop wheel t-shirts that I've seen around like on the Iron Snail channel. Great channel, by the way, check it out if you haven't yet. But these are made in America. Uh, the quality is excellent. I've had a couple of these for well over a year. I think a couple of years at this point, but I just picked up a few more. They had a warehouse sale with some of the graphic tees. Sometimes I just want that thicker feel and fabric. I think it drapes really differently differently so you style it a bit differently it's also really nice for layering if the weather's a bit cooler um, overall just two distinctly different styles and feels I really love both and uh, would definitely recommend depending on your preferences moving into regular button-up shirts I've got a decent variety here with some kind of mid-weight flannels and some really lightweight linen starting off with that mid-weight flannel though I've got the lead shirt from Taylor stitch I actually have two of these the one that I'm wearing here as well as the one on the table I've had these for quite some time I've probably worn this in half a dozen videos by now I really love these shirts and I'm a big fan of Taylor stitch after trying several of their pieces over the past year just really really good quality it's an eight ounce flannel so it's not super heavy but it's definitely not a lightweight flannel so this is going to be weather dependent definitely more of a spring piece or if you live somewhere a little more mild like Portland usually is here really great colors and cut for these I tend to wear a large they run a little bit smaller on the spectrum of sizing but the large fits me really really well where most things I'll be a medium to a large uh, really great shirts overall and kind of in a Similar vein to this one is the Filson. This is the vintage washed Alaskan guide shirt really great quality as well um, this is going to have a bit of a burlier feel not quite as soft as the Taylor stitch shirt similarly though it's also an eight ounce cotton flannel but this is just going to be a little bit more of a rough texture I have a small in Filson I usually wear small in most everything that Filson makes so small and large these are cut really similarly shifting over into some lighter weight options you know I've never been a big person for short sleeve button-ups but I've been trying to expand my horizons with my wardrobe a bit as I build up you know this sort of slow fashion wardrobe as I've been taking you through on this series of videos I picked up a couple that were just a little out of my comfort zone so far I've been really happy with them and I think these are going to really shine as the weather gets warmer here in Portland uh, first one here being the Howler Brothers crosscut deluxe shirt this had a great look when I saw it with the pearl snaps and this embroidering it just kind of has that desert sort of feel and vibe I believe Howler Brothers is based in Utah so that makes perfect sense but I've been trying to expand my wardrobe and style into this a little bit been really happy with it it's a 98% cotton with a stretch poly chambray so it has just a little hint of stretch to it but definitely doesn't have that stretchier look one thing that is really cool with this shirt underneath the hem here you have a little secret microfiber to be able to clean your glasses I thought that was a really fun and nice touch but I love this sort of double cut on the pocket here really cool look great fit on a medium here for me and uh, kind of 
of similarly to that one, I have this uh, linen shirt from Taylor Stitch. It's a five ounce linen. It's 100% linen. So this is going to be a really good option if you're in some really hot climates. You know, sometimes in the summers here, we can cross over 100 degrees, but that's usually the extreme. But again, you have that Western style pearl snap shirt. These are actually YKK pearl snaps. I didn't know YKK ventured out of zippers. You know, I'm learning more and more about clothes as I make these videos. So it's been fun to uh, educate myself on some of this. This is also garment dyed as well, like the slub cotton t-shirts. So it just has that really lived in and soft look and feel to it. Great cut on this for a large overall. The tailor stitch sizing is pretty consistent across the board with the pieces I have. I tend to be a large in everything and everything has fit really, really well. Really quick though, I wanna thank NordPass Business for sponsoring this week's video. If you're not already familiar, NordPass Business offers a way to safely store critical information about your business, including login credentials, credit cards, and notes with no limit end-to-end -end encryption. You're essentially getting a secure company-wide password manager with a ton of other benefits, like being able to make payments and purchases quickly and safely with a company credit card, maintaining and updating sensitive company information like alarm codes, Wi-Fi passwords, employee information, and having the ability to detect data breaches quickly and easily with the included breach scanner. Probably my favorite aspect of the service though is the ease to give or revoke access as needed. I'm generally a solo operator, but I'll sometimes work with contractors or freelancers on certain projects. Having the ability to manage this easily is great for big businesses, obviously, but definitely a really convenient feature for someone that is a solo operator or a smaller business like myself. If you want to optimize your workflow and save some time and energy with your business, head over to nordpass.com slash joshfen to learn more. You can use code joshfen as well to sign up for three free months of service to try it and test it out. Huge thanks again to NordPass Business for sponsoring this week's episode. Moving into pants and shorts, you all know I'm a huge fan of the Dewear No Sweat Pants. Is it Dewear or Dewer? I'm not entirely sure. But I did finally pick up a pair of the No Sweat Shorts instead of the pants after loving the pants for so long. I've been meaning and wanting to grab a pair of these for a couple of years now, and I'm glad I did. As the weather's getting warmer here, I've been wearing these out and about, and they are super comfortable, just like the No Sweat Pants. Uh, but just nice having some shorts around to add into the mix. The no sweat material is a cotton tensile lycra blend. The tensile is actually made from eucalyptus, so it's a natural fiber. It's gonna help regulate moisture and body temperature, and it's going to be antimicrobial, antibacterial. Uh, really great feeling fabric. I also really love the cut of these shorts. I got the slim version. A lot of shorts will just flare out on me because I don't have super wide, thick thighs. Uh, these fit me really well and give that nice tailored look look while still being really stretchy and comfortable. They have that signature gusset that all the Dwear pants have, which add to the comfort, definitely. Um, they have a 9.5 inch inseam or a seven inch inseam. Would definitely recommend the seven inch. Shorter shorts for guys are in. You know, I'm definitely not ready to commit to a five inch inseam, but the seven inch is plenty short for me. I think looks great. Uh, my wife loves them on me. Uh, really comfortable, really nice and soft. Uh, obviously good for the warmer weather with shorts. I'm normally more of a pants person, but it's great having some shorts in the mix here. Moving into pants, I've been trying out something new. These are the 365 pants from Flint and Tinder. Now these are just kind of a five pocket chino, so kind of more of that jean style and aesthetic with the chino material. They're 98% cotton, 2% spandex, so they have just a bit of stretch in there to be comfortable, but not so much that they really mess up the drape and the look of the fabric. I have a lot of problem with a lot of summer weight pants. They just look bad. Uh, maybe if I lived in a really hot weather climate, it wouldn't feel as weird for me, but I just don't like the drape and the look and feel of really stretchy pants or really thin pants. I don't know if I'm alone on that. seems like a lot of people love a lot of those styles, but I'm just not a fan of how they look. Uh, these have that really great sort of lived in type of feel. These are garment dyed as well. Like I said, there was going to be a theme throughout a lot of these. Uh, big fan of the garment dyed items just because they look great. They're a little bit soft and nicer and they have a lot more of a unique wear pattern kind of similar to denim I always have to have a pair of jeans in the mix I've still been using and wearing the uh, all-american stretch denim from Flint and Tinder uh, these are sewn in Los Angeles which is great to see you know made in America products I like to support that whenever I can but even aside from that I really love the cut and look and feel of these they're 95% cotton uh, 4% poly and 1% spandex so you have enough stretch in there for comfort but again 
again, not enough to mess up the drape or the look and feel. I have the slim cut in these. I think the slim is great where it's not overly slim. They're just gonna have a little bit more of a defined tapered leg. I think they look great. They're slim without being too slim. Uh, made in America, super comfortable. A couple of quick things I just remembered before we switch categories. If you're wondering where these belts are, uh, these are arcade belts. They're kind of travel friendly, TSA friendly belts. I've been obsessed with them lately. You can actually keep them on your pants and wash them. So I've just been trying to keep a belt on each of my pairs of pants so I don't have to worry about taking it off and putting it on as I change pants. I have a Smoky Bear belt. I have a couple of National Parks belts. They did just launch one from a company called Marshware. Definitely that sort of nautical themed kind of summer vibe. So check that out if you want to learn more about those. Uh, the arcade belts have been great though. You've probably heard them enough times at this point on the channel, but I just can't get enough. Next up, we've got a couple of jackets and sweatshirts. This is spring and summer. So springtime here, you definitely still need a jacket in Portland. I also know there's some Southern hemisphere folks that are probably watching this. You're getting into the colder months. So I still wanted to cover these and uh, kind of combine the seasons into one video. But first up, we've got the Prospector hoodie from Filson. It's a 13 ounce fabric. There's 75% cotton, 25% poly Polyester. So you get a little bit of added softness from the polyester, but they have that kind of sturdiness and lack of stretch from the cotton. Definitely more of a like workwear, thick, sturdy type of feel with these compared to some of the other hoodies that are a little bit softer, kind of better indoor hoodies, if that makes sense. This is a great one to wear as an outer layer, as a jacket if you're outside. Really nice look, super warm, just really durable, heavy duty type of sweatshirt. Moving on from there, I've got the shop shirt from Taylor Stitch. Now this is technically a shirt, but it is so thick and heavy duty. I wanted to bring it into the jacket category because that's typically how I wear it. What really stood out to me for this, aside from the looks, is actually the fabric that they use. It's a 12 ounce boss duck fabric that's 54% hemp, 30% recycled polyester, 14% organic cotton, and 2% spandex. A uh, really unique feel and look to the fabric. Really unique texture with all that hemp in there. It just has that really thick, sturdy feel. You know, definitely the shop shirt meant to be worn in the shop, so it's going to be abrasion resistant and all that. Last but not least, my absolute favorite jacket I've gotten in some time. Uh, this is the Flint and Tinder waxed canvas flannel line jacket. I was lucky enough to get this back in the fall, so I did wear it a bit for the fall season. I did wear it occasionally throughout the winter with some other layers and uh, makes a perfect spring jacket as well. It's made in America. It's cut and sewn and finished in Los Angeles. Even some of the fabrics that they're using are sourced in the U.S. as well. The shell fabric is a 7 ounce Martexan sailcloth. It's 100% cotton. It's also waxed, which is going to add to the water and weather resistance if you're not familiar with wax jackets or wax canvas in general. Uh, it's meant to be used and reworn and rewaxed, and it's going to weather and patina over time and continue to look great. I think for someone like me that isn't using this in a super like heavy duty, you know, I'm not out working in forestry and I'm not working as a mechanic or something. You know, I have my soft, cushy office life here. Uh, you get a lot of that great aesthetics and you get a little bit more of a modern cut and fit compared to some other wax canvas jackets. So I think the fit and cut works a lot better from a fashion style standpoint. You still have room for layers in here, which is really nice, but it's just going to be a little bit more of a flattering cut and look to wear day to day outside of a workwear setting. The interior is this really nice polyester blanket lining. You have a nice interior pocket here as well. And you actually have a little patch here that shows where the fabric came from, where it was made. Super cool, just a nice little touch to the kind of heritage workwear vibe of this. Uh, this was also worn in The Last of Us by Pedro Pascal. I've actually been holding off on watching the show until I get a PS5 and play The Last of Us. I don't want to spoil the game by watching the show first. Let me know your spoiler free thoughts if you watched it though, but this is a, just a really great jacket. Again, just another piece that's going to live for decades and just continue to look better and better with time and age. Moving into shoes and sandals again I am expanding my horizons here with some new styles and uh, lately I've been getting really into sneakers and as much as I love getting into these sneakers I'm not paying aftermarket crazy prices for some Jordan 4s or anything as much as I might want some but I found these Asics and just instantly fell in love with them these are the Gel Sonoma 1550s this was a collab with Toyota Gosai I think I'm pronouncing that right but these are made from recycled airbags 
which is really cool, obviously, from a recycled material standpoint, but they just give them a really cool look and feel. Now they have these red accents like the recycled airbag material has, um, just really nice look and sizing the uh, the tongue they have kind of a little bit poofier they say that's meant to look like an inflated airbag um, but i love the contrast and style for these they have sort of aggressive styling on the tread but they're kind of the softer more plushy sort of look and feel so aesthetically these are 10 out of 10 for me but aside from that they are extremely comfortable uh, one thing as i've gotten into sneakers i struggle with you know i really like zero drop shoes i like that natural wide toe box you know the more i hike i've hiked a few thousand miles over the past few years of getting into backpacking and my toes have splayed like crazy from wearing ultras while I hike which is a really good thing for me um, but you know it's not the best thing for fashion I don't like how a lot of those zero drop shoes look uh, these have a wide enough toe box where they are comfortable and the uh, cushioning in here is really nice and soft and cushy they make for a great recovery shoe if you've got some sore feet but just love the aesthetics love the recycled materials um, super comfortable look great all in all I've been just so so happy with these they're one of the coolest finds I have seen in quite some time and for the true test of expanding horizons I've got my first pair of Crocs finally in 2023. Uh, these are the Echo Clogs in marble color. Uh, I saw these and just thought they were so cool. It was the first pair of Crocs I've ever seen that I actually wanted and could actually see myself wearing. Uh, in my eyes, these are you know pretty heavily inspired by the Yeezy Foam Runners, but from what I've seen online, these are much more comfortable. They're obviously less expensive and don't have Kanye and his idiocy attached to them. Um, these have been really great errand shoes for me though. Throw them on to go take out the trash, run and grab some groceries or something. Super comfortable. I think they look really cool. And uh, I never thought I'd be saying any of this about a pair of Crocs, but here I am. I uh, would definitely recommend them. They're not very expensive, just some great kind of slip on shoes, similar to how a sandal would work. Uh, I'm really looking forward to like taking these out to the beach and to the river and everything this year. Last up on the shoe list for sandals, uh, these are the Astral Weber sandals. I did just get these in a few days ago, so I don't have any long-term thoughts quite yet, but they were really interesting, so I thought I would share my sort of initial impressions and introduce all of you to them because I've been really happy with them so far. What really struck me with these was the environmental aspects of these. They use a lot of recycled materials and what's not recycled is still blue sign approved material, which is always great to see and something I've been seeing more and more of lately, which is awesome. Uh, but they also have a zero drop footbed, which is great. And they're really comfortable. Um, you know, I always kind of go back and forth on sandals. These are pretty easy to slip on and off. Uh, initial pressions with the comfort have been great. They have an antimicrobial footbed as well. So they're going to prevent some of that stink. Um, but yeah, I'll be sure to report back with those as I use them more, but they've been really nice so far and I look forward to testing them out properly in the months to come. But that's it for the spring and summer wardrobe update. I hope you all really enjoyed this one. I'm glad I still kept it going. You know, I ended up canceling the spring one just because the weather was so crappy. I couldn't be talking about shorts and flip flops and all that sort of stuff while uh, I was still seeing my breath outside, but I'm glad we're getting some nice weather here. Uh, let me know what you thought of these. If you want me to do more kind of wardrobe content like this, I always have a ton of fun making it. It's been really fun learning about different fabrics and sewing processes and dyeing processes. And you know, I love being able to deep dive into that stuff. And with these, you know, higher quality, more like slow fashion oriented clothes, there's a lot to dig into. So I've been having a ton of fun with that. Uh, be sure to check out the sponsor for this week's video as well. NordPass Business. Head over to NordPass.com slash Josh Fenn. Uh, use code Josh Fenn for three free months if you want to test it out. Uh, thank you all so much for watching this one though, and I'll talk to you in the next one.